Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, I love that both of you get to play a queer couple in this movie. And I think that representation is so important, especially in teen movies and TV shows. What advice do you have for queer teens out there that are starting to learn and accept who they are? That they're beautiful, man. Being free, being in love, being yourself. That's beautiful. And some people, some adults even, don't ever get to that. And so uh, I hope kids realize that they, they can be all those things. And that's, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And giving yourself the permission to evolve and knowing that it's going to be not just right this second as a young person, but for the rest of your life, you are going to evolve so beautifully and so magically and uh, give yourself permission to accept that part that you're going to mm -hmm. constantly get better. Oh my God. I love that so much. Um, music plays an important role in this movie. Did you two have like a playlist for your characters or for your relationship in the movie? So I don't know if we're allowed to say this. Um, we actually created playlists. Um, uh, Kara and I created a playlist that will be on Spotify, I believe, but don't, don't, uh, don't take a word <laughs> on that. But, uh, we created a playlist and I'm excited for people to hear it. Cause, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it's it's a great way to get into the mind. My, my character, I decided, uh, was a big K-pop fan. Mm. And so my playlist isn't just K-pop. It's kind of the larger Korean music scene. But uh, I hope I hope people like it. I hope it's a good intro to my character. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think you know, La is La's playlist represents the fact that she is unapologetically black queer, creative, mm -hmm. radical thinker, is the change that she wants to see in the world, will change the world, will join and join forces for, for revolution. She's a revolutionary. Oh my, oh my God, I cannot wait to listen to both of these playlists. <laughs> um, how, you know, one of the themes in the paper in the movie is teenage limbo. How do you think that that has changed for teens today versus maybe when you were in school? Um, I think there's a lot more pressure on kids now with social media. You're, you're comparing yourself to a ton of other people. Um, you're, you're absorbing so much of the tragedies that's hap that are happening all throughout the world in a way. Um, um, and so I think um, kids have to grow up a lot faster, I think, now than when I was a kid. And, um, and that makes the limbo weirder. And uh, it feels strange to be a kid and then also try to be an adult now. That's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's it's pain. It's painful being a teenager, and I think that like, you know, chemically our bodies are changing, and we're becoming people that we didn't really see when we were younger. Like we're actually ch changing, um, and so it's it's important to know that you'll move through that. You will move through mm -hmm. it. It'll it'll. I, th I think I forgot the question, bro. <laughs> okay. That's okay, because that's actually okay. a really great answer, and I love it. So thank you so much. I hope teens take a lot away from these movies, especially your couple. It's really great to see that on screen, especially as a gay man. It's great, and I'm hoping that queer teens out there really appreciate that storyline. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Paul. Paul. Thank you. Have a good day, both of you. Yeah. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Richard, it's really great talking to you today. What, um, what stood out about the book to you that made you want to adapt the screenplay and then direct it? Great to talk to you. Thanks for, thanks for doing this. I, I, I'm so distracted by your unbelievable collection right now. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. It's, it's alphabetical or alphabetical. There's director sections. There, there's a system to my madness. Yeah. Well, the, and that, the figuring out what system to, uh, to use is always the hardest part. Do you go right. alphabetical? Do you go by director? But uh, I love that Batman. Uh, is that a box set that you have? Yeah, up there? it's of the Adam West TV series. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and there's like a little Batmobile car in there, and it's it's fantastic. That's awesome. All right, yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. So I um, uh, uh, the book the book for me was a, a, a very fast read. I, I related to it superficially in the sense that I was editor in chief of my school paper my senior year. Uh, and I had a very similar dynamic, a kind of infatuation with this girl that didn't work out the way I wanted it to, just like Henry and just like Grace. Um, and I was also in a car accident uh, that 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 was very similar and parallel what Grace paralleled what Grace went through a little bit later in my life. So just there was a lot for me personally to dig into. But then on on a deeper level, 
I, I loved the idea of being able to tell a story about high school that felt like my high school experience, which is just something, something that allows the characters to sort of cross that threshold from adolescence into adulthood with, but, but through pain and, 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 and anguish and, and, and loss and heartbreak. I mean, that, that's what I think about when I think back to my high school years. Now with Lily being your main actress in it and being one of the film's producers, can you talk a little bit about that collaboration? Is it different when one of your main actors is creatively behind the scenes? No, it's really not different. I've had it on both my movies now, um, uh, where I partnered up with with the lead actress, and it it's it's great because you're in it together from the start before any other studio or financier comes on board. You're on the same page. You develop a trust, and that's really what you need when you work with your actors is trust. Um, so to have that by the time you already get to set or rehearsal, is uh, is is a really advantageous thing. Good. Now, did you get to work with author Crystal Sutherland and were there parts of the book where she's like, make sure you get this right or this this scene is really important to me or any beats like that? No, Crystal uh, read the script and we had a conversation and she made it very clear that A, she loved it and B, she was entrusting me to tell the story and to tell it the way that I needed to. That, wow. the, that the movie and the book are two totally separate pieces of art. Um, and, uh, and she's very happy with the movie and very supportive. Um, we have a, a good friendship and, uh, uh, she was on set for about a week, which was, which was really special to, to be able to watch some of the scenes come to life with her on set. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, my last question for you is, were there, we're like roughly the same age. Were there any teen YA movies that you grew up with that kind of stood out and were so important to you? Yeah, well, back back in our day, uh, <laughs> YA was not really even a, mm -hmm. a known term or label. It was just a movie about young people, Yeah, uh, which, which is kind of a nice thing. But uh, the movies that come to mind, they're kind of eclectic. I would say Rushmore, uh, Better Luck Tomorrow, Boys in the Hood, uh, um, uh, uh, what else? Um, uh, Elef Gus Van Sant's Elephant. Um, the list goes on and on. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Congrats for on the movie. I hope people see it. And I hope they get a lot, a lot out of it, especially with the queer storyline between Coral and Kara. Thank you. Thank you for bringing and, that up. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a great conversation with them too. So thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You're welcome.